Professor Michio Kaku, cosmologist, talks about three types of extraterrestrial civilizations and us humans. I'm translating from a Greek article. The first to speak of types of extraterrestrial cultures was Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev in 1964. His view was that advanced extraterrestrial cultures can be divided into three types. Based on this theory, professor of theoretical physics at the University of New York, Dr. Michio Kaku, developed his own theoretical classification of three types. Alien type one is where all extraterrestrial cultures have managed to control forms of energy on a planetary level. They control the earthquakes, the weather, the volcanoes, they have cities on the ocean, everything on a planet is controlled. And then the extraterrestrial type culture number two, they belong to those who manage energies at the astral level and receive energy directly from their parent star. They use solar energy that is directly from the sun to power their huge machines. When they reach the point of exhausting power from one star, they go to the next. That is, they are gradually depleting the Milky Way's millions of stars. Now, after I talk about this, I'm going to I'm going to go into the Tesla. Well, why don't we go into that now? We don't have to deplete any stars' energy because we can use the ether, which is all around the universe, and it's unlimited. Uh, you use it, you you, you you use it, but you give it back again. Anyway, there's no reason to deplete a star, then move and go somewhere else. To the next one to exhaust the power. Anyway, I'm just reading this article for you. Alien type 3, there, here are those who consume galactic energy, taking advantage of the forces of their entire galaxy. Which of the above does our planet belong to? The explanation given by the theoretical physicist is disarming. Quote, what are we on this scale? We are type zero. We do not belong to this scale at all. We do not get energy from stars or galaxies, but from dead plants and oil. However, we can calculate when we will evolve into a type culture. One, about 100 years, in about 100 years. Every time I read the newspapers, I see evidence of this historic transition from type zero to type one. And I'm privileged to live in the most important aberration in human history, the transition from type 0 to type 1. So this trans transition is probably the most important that has ever happened. Some people don't want it. They fear this transition because it will be in a planetary culture that is tolerant of many cultures. They are in a gap. They are scared because they know they are witnessing the birth of a new planetary culture. So they don't want to have anything to do with it. We're in the most critical period for the survival of our planet, according to Kaku. And we are the most critical phase of our planet because within the next hundred years, we should have evolved from type zero to type one culture because otherwise humanity will not survive. So the question is whether we will be able to evolve enough to make that transition. Okay, well, my position here is... Uh, there have been so many inventions uh, made by very smart scientists, and they seem to have been suppressed. And now, one of them being Tesla, saying that we could have unlimited energy by uh, the energy that's all around us and uh, give it to everyone else in the world. And without using fossil fuels or without using energy and depleting energy for anywhere else. So we don't have to, uh, uh, let's put it this way, evolve and uh, transition because we have that energy all around us anyway. Now going back to Michio Kaku, he attempts to answer questions like this. He says, when we look into space, we found, find nowhere evidence of type 1, 2, and 3 cultures. Nothing or anything. Mathematics says there must be thousands of type 1, 2, and 3 civilizations in the galaxy, but we see no evidence. So why is this happening? Because the transition from type 1 to type, from type 0 to type 1 is the most dangerous of all. We may not succeed, he says. And then he goes to say, 
It's a race against time. On the one hand, we have the forces of evolution and of many cultures in front of our eyes. On the other hand, we have weapons of mass destruction, such as nuclear power, atomic power, which are obstacles to achieve our goal. In other words, they may not have succeeded in space. If one day we have spaceships that can visit other stellar systems, we might find planets that are not atmospheric or that the atmospheres are too hot to sustain life there and that they have not gone from one type, uh, type 1 to type 2. Can an alien civilization become immortal? Michio Kaku says, any extraterrestrial culture that manages to evolve into type 2 will also be immortal. Nothing known in science can destroy type 2 culture. Even a superstar cannot destroy it. Either they will move their entire planet or they will simply stop the nuclear fires before they explode. They may have reached the point of controlling the fate of the entire galaxy. In addition, in type 3 culture, one would be able to explore the planet without seeking Captain Kirk with Enterprise and going from star system to star system. That would take millions of years to explore the entire galaxy. They would do it with a robot landing uh, on a satellite. There would be a factory where they would make millions of copies of the robot and send the copies to other stars. Then each of them would create where another factory was located. That is to say, starting with one robot, we would have millions of robots. By the time a sphere formed at the speed of light, would continue trillions of these robots. They would eventually land on a star and just wait until a culture of type 0 evolved into type 1. And finally, Michio Kaku emphasizes, Today, today's generation and our grandchildren are the most important generations to have ever walked the surface of the Earth. It's up to the generations to decide whether to make a transition from type O to type 1 culture or to destroy themselves because of our selfishness. End quote. And uh, this is by Olga Tanu. Pilas TV, and uh, I'm translating this from the Adrastica. And again, uh, my input here is, and of course, I would like to hear your comments. We already had inventions by many wonderful scientists, one of them being Nikola Tesla and his Wardenclyffe Tower, for example, that was uh, gathering the energy from the ionosphere freely in order to uh, freely give it out to any areas of the world and that this energy is in the ether is coming to us from the ether and the ether fills up the whole of the universe this is something that the ancient greeks knew of as well that the universe uh, the space in between planets and uh, comets and stars and the galaxies is not empty it's um, an electromagnetic field that is full of um, potential energy. And this is what Tesla was trying to lock into because it's everywhere. And it can be given freely to people without having people pay for anything. Well, maybe some towers or some uh, initial uh, substances that you'd have to start it with, but the energy itself would be free. So it's, the energy is here. We don't have to deplete it from any sun or move our planets and move it to another sun, etc. Because the energy is all around us already. Uh, so the question is, why aren't we using this? Why isn't this given freely to people if it's all around us to begin with? If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.